After extending their session into this week, it's looking like lawmakers in Albany are making some progress. They've reached a tentative deal that addresses a lot of issues. Perhaps the most contentious has been over rent regulations. Now, under this deal, they've agreed to extend the expiring laws for four more years, strengthen rent protections to help tenants, and deregulate certain apartments that become vacant. But it wasn't all just about the rent. The lawmakers have also agreed to extend mayoral control of New York City schools, but only for one year. Also to extend the affordable housing tax credit by six months and extend the 2% property tax cap for four years. But the private school tax credit did not make the cut. So for more, let's turn to our panel, and it's a group of longtime friends of the show tonight. Richard Brodsky, former Democratic New York State Assemblyman, now a senior fellow at Demos and a professor at NYU. Welcome back. Nice Dominic Carter, political journalist and author, as you heard from the last segment. Republican strategist Bill O'Reilly is here, and Scott Vanderhoff, an attorney and former five-term Rockland County executive. So the sense that I get is that there's a little bit in everything, a little bit for everybody to be happy about, a little bit for everybody to be unhappy about with a lot of extenders, which is pretty much what we expected, Richard? Yeah, I don't know why anybody would be happy or sad. They, these are extenders. You know, this is existing law, pushed forward, no changes in policy, including in areas where changes in policy were called for. So, uh, you know, uh, it is what it is. Um, it is as predicted, um, but uh, it's nothing to celebrate. Bill, any, th any surprises out of the deal no, for you? No, nothing really happened this year, and I think that's what, I mean, nothing happened this year other than a speaker getting arrested and indicted and a, and a Senate leader <laughs> getting arrested and indicted, you know. Other than, other than that, Mrs. Lincoln. Is, yeah, yeah. You know. <laughs> but the, uh, but, but no, I mean, there were no surprises on the, on the session. Everything, like Richard said, there were extenders, they pushed it through. I don't think there was anything that's going to save the state. There was not, not too much more damage done to the state. I think it was pretty much of a push here. Scott? Well, I, I think it's a general failure all the way around. Uh, there are also a couple things in there that have not been uh, fully addressed but are included in the settlement. One is $250 million going to private schools as a result of the failure to give credit. The other is a circuit breaker, which is supposed to be plugged into this property tax cap. Nobody understands how that might work. Uh, but those things are important. A lot of conservatives are, are raising major concerns. But I think, there are two, and the other thing is, I think de Blasio lost big time here with a one-year extender. He barely can catch his breath before he's got to lobby, lobby again. And the, other, and the other side of that is, in addition to that, I mean, the governor came out today and said, this is a great, great compromise. This is, as rich as, this is nothing here. It's historic. It's, 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 it's historic here. <laughs> having been quoted approvingly, I don't want to disturb anything, but this also sets up um, next year as a time when the governor can come and use his bizarre budget powers to change these things. So uh, although it is, as I think we all agree, there's a, a lurking specter down here, which is the governor coming in, uh, in in February, March of next year and saying, nope, 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 and the legislature not having the constitutional authority to disagree with them. Let's talk about some of the issues that, that we've gone through here. The education tax credit, which the governor had been lobbying for, which would have helped private and parochial schools, that fell apart. They couldn't come to a deal. But that $250 million to help private schools, the argument that the governor gave is that if you didn't help the private and parochial schools, it would put too much of a, of a burden on the public schools. You buy that, Bill? I, I, di I didn't follow the 250. I saw the, the headline this afternoon, but I, I didn't follow the issue very well. I, w I was supporting the, the tax credit, mm -hmm. hoping that would go through. Um, I, I don't know the I, I don't know the details. I mean, it was promised for a couple of years. I don't know the details of the 250 million, how that works. So I'll have to punch somebody else. Knows knows the I, yeah, a lot of this down. is to be determined. But there just flat wasn't enough support for the education tax credit. Was In the it? assembly, the right. Senate was the Republicans generally supported it. Democrats generally opposed it. Right. Um, the the argument has always been that the public the responsibility of the government is the public schools, uh, which are available to to people if they want to go to a private school. They have that right, right but, but, but one has to wonder how much union backing working against this from the UFT and the others that that actually killed this. There are a lot of uh, private schools and there and you go again. They, it was, they, it was, the, church, go it was again. the Catholic Church against the unions, basically. Right, but, but, not, but, but not this? But not just the Catholic who Church. Actually had opinions. But not just the Catholic. Or they, they public school. Oh, was and, it, and it, it, was, it had nothing geez, to do with the money. Louis. It had nothing to do with the lobby, Scott. But as a policy matter, this is just stupid. Because you become, what's the difference between a private and a public school? Public schools are funded by the public. 
private schools, you want to fund and give credits to, to families who, in fact, are sending their children to private schools. That's one thing. That's, but to send money to the private schools, where does it end? I mean, what's the slippery slope? How much does, how much does they get based on what? They have a constitutional problem. You cannot provide direct aid. It's the so Amendment, right? it, 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 so there, it's, it's also a federal constitutional federal, yeah. question. So there's going to be <coughs> The devil is in the details in this one. Uh, even though uh, two two more points that I want to get to the the first and I'm directing this at you Richard this deal was announced and this press conference was held before the leaders in the Senate and the Assembly had had a chance to sell it to their conferences how unusual is that that they would go public with all the details how difficult will it be for Flanagan and Hasty to sell this most of the time these things are not discussed just after the deals announced most of the time the leaders understand where the rank and file are and rarely exceed their mandate. So I, I don't ex expect this to be a problematic. Things blow up, but generally speaking, the leaders are in touch with the members. Scott, the one issue that I was waiting to hear if it was going to be included or not in all of this deal was East Rambopo to see if it factored in. It wasn't. There was no mention of it. It doesn't appear as though it's part of this deal. What, to your mind, does this mean for the notion or the, the hope for a monitor for East Rambopo, or is that something that you think would be worked out separately anyway? Well, as to the first part of the question, I think it's a stalemate. I mean, between the Senate and the Assembly and the two bills that were there. Um, so I don't, I don't think you'll see a monitor of any sort from any side uh, for this session. But something has to be done, and so it becomes a question of pulling the people and the folks together during the off-season, if you will, to determine what the best strategy is. But, you know, I mean, once they established two bills after having gone through the assembly with such difficult time, and, and as I mentioned earlier, uh, at least to Richard, I mean, the assembly was porn, uh, torn apart as a result of this bill with factions representing all sorts of different views on this thing. Uh, certainly, they weren't going to entertain the Senate bill, which, uh, l you know, languishes in, in the Senate chamber. Distinct, distinct possibility that the next school year opens without a monitor in place. What do you think is the fate of East Ramapo? Or, or what challenges does that provide for the students of East Ramapo if there's not? Well, it, there has to be some change there. There has to be. The school district needs a, a lot of work. There are all, all sorts of things going on there. There needs to be some sort of supervision as to the policies uh, that are made there somehow. Uh, whether the governor steps up, whether the controller steps up, uh, whether there's some other kind of uh, process, I don't know. But something has to be done. All right, we're going to take a break here. When we come back, Bill de Blasio, he lost out on mayoral control in that Albany deal. Now his testy relationship with the NYPD being put to the test. He now wants to hire more officers, but will that satisfy his critics?